It is time now for our next guest, the keynoter at the Republican convention. And here's what Senator Biden had to say about him last year. Rudy Giuliani, probably the most underqualified man since George Bush to seek the presidency, <laughs> is here talking about any of the people here. Rudy Giuliani. I mean, think about it. Rudy Giuliani, there's, th there's only three things he mentioned in a sentence, a noun and a verb and 9-11. I mean, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. Okay, Mayor Giuliani, good morning. That's what Senator Biden thought about good you morning. during the primaries. What's your take on his pick? Good morning. Well, I welcome Joe to, the, uh, uh, to, to this whole uh, effort again. I mean, Joe is a, a friend of mine. He's someone I've known for many years. Worked with him when I was in the Justice Department. Worked with him on the crime bill and have great respect for him. I just think that uh, uh, this is a problem for Senator Obama more than anything else, not for Joe Biden. I mean, Senator... Senator Obama has made a choice more out of weakness than strength. It's quite clear from all of the commentaries, all the things I've heard from Democrats in particular, the strong choice would have been Hillary Clinton. The obvious choice would have been Hillary Clinton. She had 50% of the Democratic vote. Obama has 50% of the Democratic vote. You almost have to go to extraordinary lengths to avoid her as the vice presidential pick of the party. And it seems to me that for whatever reason that hasn't been explained, a choice was made out of uh, weakness and strength. You know, d don't go with your strongest candidate and then go with a candidate that actually emphasizes all your weaknesses and has been quite vocal about them. I mean, it's Joe Biden who Why said isn't it tough? That, that, that he wasn't, uh, to you, I, I, I've, I've seen that clip, I think, a hundred times between uh, today and yesterday of you asking him whether he, was, whether he was qualified, whether Obama was qualified for being president. And Biden was quite clear that he didn't believe that he was qualified to be president of the United States. Not experienced enough. I've seen exactly, I've definitely seen the same clip. But why <laughs> yeah. isn't it toughness to say no to Senator Clinton, even though she had all that support? Well, I think it's, it, it, I think it's actually weakness, isn't it? I mean, uh, it, is it tough to turn down the person that gives you the best chance to win because it unites your party? Or is it uh, some kind of... Uh, difficulty in dealing with one of your rivals. I mean, I, honestly, I'm just speculating. I don't know. The only facts I have, George, are the ones that you have. Senator Obama had 50 percent of the Democratic vote. Senator Clinton has 50 percent of the Democratic vote. It's kind of a no-brainer that that's your ticket. And now some other ticket, whether it was Biden or Bai or uh, some of the Kane, some of the others that were out there, that all is a way of, this is, the story here is more the Obama, not Clinton ticket. Why? Senator Biden was Senator Biden was very uh, wasn't shy yesterday at all about getting into the debate of the week. And you heard David Axelrod talk about Senator McCain's houses uh, as well. Here's Senator Biden yesterday. You talk about how much you're worried about being able to pay the bills. That's not a worry John McCain has to worry about. It's a pretty hard experience. He'll have to figure out which of the seven kitchen tables to sit at. They clearly think you know, they struck is, a nerve here. <laughs> <laughs> they do, but they both live in million-dollar homes. Uh, so you know, people. What is that about? People in glass well, houses. Senator Obama has one. Stones? Senator Obama. I don't know. One one million-dollar house, two, three, four. I, you're sort of not in a position to be pointing at other people when you are in that one percent of America. In terms of, uh, I mean, how many people live in one million-dollar homes? They both do. This is not going to be, I think, a fruitful way of going about it. And it's not the new but, politics that Senator Obama was talking about. I mean, the, the thing that made Senator Obama popular was change and new politics. Now he goes and selects a 35-year veteran of, of the Senate, a Washington insider, certainly not change by anybody's definition, and he's engaging in the same kind of political negative attacks that everybody else ever engaged in and trying to paint this as a new campaign. George, it simply isn't a new campaign. But, in fact, this is the reason why Mayor, he's underperforming his party. But presumably, you know, you know how many homes you have. Don't you think this is going to resonate with voters who are struggling to get by? Doesn't it worry you at all? No, no, no. I mean, you know why? Because I know John uh, so well. The, the one thing, you, you, there are certain stereotypes that work in attacks on candidates and others that don't. Trying to convince the American people that John McCain is not a regular guy just isn't going to work. Now, he's a good friend of mine. I know him in ways that maybe the American people are just getting to know him. I've been at baseball games with him. I've been at football games with him. We've talked sports. We've talked lots of things. Uh, we've gone out together. This is a regular guy that almost any American could relate to. 
Okay, Mayor Giuliani, you know, the McCain team has been sounding out party leaders about the prospect of picking a pro-choice uh, running mate, as you know. And this has met a pretty violent reaction from many conservatives, including Rush Limbaugh. Take a listen. He's going to hurt himself by putting a liberal or a liberal Republican on this ticket, particularly pro-choice. If they do that, if the McCain camp does that, they will have effectively destroyed the Republican Party and pushed the conservative movement into the bleachers. There already is an enthusiasm gap among Republicans, as you know. Are you worried that a pro-choice running mate would depress the base? No, I'm, I, what I want John to select is the best possible candidate. And I think John has such a strong record on being pro-life. Uh, One hundred percent, as far as I can tell, from the very beginning, from the first moment he got into politics. You couldn't have a candidate with a stronger record on pro-life. You couldn't have a candidate that's more committed to appointing judges like Roberts, like uh, Scalia, like uh, uh, the, uh, the judges who have been appointed by uh, Alito. I mean, these are judges that Biden voted against. These are judges that, in some cases, he wasn't in the Senate, that presumably Obama would vote against. Those are the things that are going to bring conservatives around. And of course he's going to select a conservative. John is a conservative. He always has been. But I think he's not going to get down to a one-issue situation. Nobody is at 100 percent. We heard. And I think John. Good. Well, I'm sorry. We heard that Senator Hillary Clinton was not vetted. Um, have you been vetted? by John McCain, and have you talked to him about the vice presidency? Uh, I, I haven't, I have not been, as far as I can tell, uh, vetted, if, you, if they do tell you about that. Uh, in the case of Hillary Clinton, they thought that she didn't need to be vetted because it had been, you know, exposed so much, or, or various things about her life have been exposed so much. In my case, I think the same thing is true, although I'm not a candidate uh, for vice president, but you can pretty much vet me in about 15 minutes. You wouldn't accept it? By, by, go by Googling me. Uh, I, I, I am uh, certain that the candidate, uh, it's down to three or four candidates. It is not me. I think uh, the three or four are terrific. I have my own views on them, which I will deliver personally. But I think John has some really excellent choices. Okay, Mayor Giuliani, thanks very much for your time this morning. Good to talk to you again, George. See you, I'll see you, I'll see you uh, out Take in uh, St. Paul. <laughs> All right. I hope so.